Hey, so uh, today on Progressive E, uh, we are installing a new bull bar to a Mazda BT50. Um, something you probably don't know about me is I actually own an electrical business. Um, so this is one of our work cars. So because we live in Australia, there's plenty of animals and everything that jump out. So you kind of really need to run a bull bar. So when I chuck one on this bad boy, it's for something different. So uh, you can come along for the ride. Okay, so uh, first up, obviously uh, pop your bonnet. Uh, we're gonna go through and basically remove the clips that hold the bumper bar on. So we'll start from the top and then we'll work our way on the bottom. Um, you can use a screwdriver to pop these plastic clips up. Basically you just uh, angle these like this. They, pop, they pull out, they're pretty easy. If you worry about scratching them, another little cool trick, what you can do if you don't have a little cool plastic screwdriver to do this with, it's literally just get a bit of electrical tape. Put it around your screwdriver. And then when you go to lift these up, the tape acts like a little guide and stops you scratching your little clips. You are an amazing ball of light. So once you've done this top section here, then we're just gonna move on to the, uh, the lower section. One of the coolest tools you can ever buy for maximum wang is an electric screwdriver. A lot of this stuff's not going back on ever again, so it's a bit easy, pretty light to use, so it makes the job a lot quicker. So just gonna release these clips around the side now. Uh, nothing really special about these, but uh, just get your screwdriver underneath them and flick them out. Pretty simple. Uh, there is a different pushing type one where you basically have to push this in with your screwdriver like this, and then you can get your other screwdriver and release it. So yeah, pretty simple. It's worth noting as well that uh, everything down here, this will all get cut for this new bar, so we don't need to be too careful here. Look, man, Joe did it. Good Joe. Good job, Joe. You are so we'll uh, take this section off and uh, remove the final clips. Cool, so next step is uh, this crash bar gets replaced by the bull bar, so this will come off. Um, this air guide as well, um, this also needs to come off, so we'll pull this bad boy off as well. Um, and then we can basically pull the factory bash plate off. Um, we need to cut the grill for this car, so we'll, we'll do that. We need to remove these headlight brackets as well. Um, so these side pieces, so the kit comes with another bracket that fits in here. Um, so we'll go with that. Cool, so now we've got the bar off. All we've done now is uh, unplug the lights uh, either side, lights and indicators. Um, also taking this up, uh, unplugged all the parking sensors. We're gonna pull this off, we're gonna mark it with a paint pen uh, and then cut it. In this kit, basically there's a, another bracket that basically sits here. I've just noticed that there's actually a little tiny uh, rubber section, or, sorry, plastic section here. So it isn't in the instructions, but you have to shave that off to basically put this headlight fixing bracket in. What does it mean to be happy? Cause it looks like we all don't know. Also, once you've uh, 
cut your, uh, your grill, time to put it back on. I actually made a mess up here. I was like looking at the instructions and it had this shape kind of dictated in it. I made this shape, but I should have made the shape here. So you'll see if I unfortunately had to put a cable tie on here, kind of fitting for a uh, electrician's car, but uh, yeah, held together with cable ties. This is uh, mounting our fog lights into the brackets. Also folding together the uh, indicators. This uh, kit has a lot of pieces. It's like a gigantic Meccano set. Itself. You can't have cables running uh, through this section where it uh, bolts on. So this side we did right. This side we, we stuffed up. Yep. So we just ran it through the uh, top hole there, keeping it out of the way. Oh yeah. Try to look Let me know. Yeah. Yeah. Have a water like too good. Yep. No okay, so we've got this thing on. Now, what a dog that was to do compared to a previous off-road animal bumper bar I've installed. So basically on a uh, MP300, this was a straight four hour job. I literally had a lift for a second. This one took really about 10 hours just because cutting along here everything had to be precision we also had some issues with the wiring basically each one of these supplied indicators which also acts as a drl these were basically wired differently from factory so the color code that was in the manual was it was correct for one side but incorrect for another and it turned out that basically the wiring and, and the pinouts for this was different so for some reason obviously maybe a batch discrepancy that was the go there the other issue that uh me and Truett had a real good time with and i mean real good time was uh these things so we originally had these painted just some plastic dip we basically had to man like you have to push so damn hard on these things to get them in there yeah i'm pretty sure i haven't pushed anything in something that hard in my life but uh, man, true, we, we pushed something in a hole like no man's done before. I think it looks pretty sick. Like I'm, I'm happy with uh, the, how the bar looks. I've always been a fan of, of these bars. Obviously just having the integrated light bars is really, really cool. These are all wired up now. That literally took about an hour, way quicker than the install. So if you haven't fitted a uh, bull bar to a car before, something that's really important is to have basically a spacing here. This only wants to be about 15, 20 mil. You can kind of get away, but the main thing is, is the side, basically because this bar is now attached to the chassis and the chassis is gonna move independent to the body that's on top. Basically, if you don't have this gap, you're gonna basically crease guards, scratch everything. So you need to have a gap that basically runs around. So unfortunately, it doesn't look as pretty, but from a distance, it looks sick. So another thing uh, we didn't film, but uh, I did later that night because me and Truett were well and truly over it, was uh, cutting the inner mud guard. So these basically hang down a fair bit lower. I just cut these with tin snips. Uh, it looks pretty average, but uh, it's underneath the car, so it'll do. But realistically, best way to do it, mark it with a paint pen and then cut it as, as close as you can with a set of tin snips would be good. Ideally, if you could remove this and cut it, probably be better, but for those people in a rush and it's underneath the car, basically mark with a paint pen, cut it with tin snips, you're done. Okay, so the other part we had to fit was this lower section here. This is basically like, your pants that go on top of your underpants. So without this, you're probably gonna pull a lot of girls. So uh, definitely need these fitted. 
if you want to go out with the boys. But uh, these just bolt on, cage nuts go in here. Super easy, pretty simple. So uh, I know this was a different video from us, so hope you guys liked it. Uh, this is obviously a work vehicle for, you know, my business, but something that uh, we wanted to film and have a crack at. So it'd be awesome if you liked and uh, way better if you subscribed. Thanks for watching Progressive E. See you in the next one.